Hello everybody. Hello my friends. Thank you so much for coming back for part two. Uh, we are here with Savannah Venger, again part two, but I was able to, uh, well we're in a different location at Bedford Station, we're in a different spot, but I wanted to be able to show you, you know, she's pretty scarred up. Um, you know, she still has the uh, she's got the scar above her eye and the scars on her on her lips and things like that. She's also got uh, a, a large one underneath her uh, hair bangs. Whoops! That's one of the reasons why she cover, brushes her hair that way. Uh, you can kind of make out a bit of a scar just underneath her eye area. Uh, it's it's faint. Oh, there she goes. She's showing it to you. It's still kind of hard. It's not as noticeable, but, uh, you know, that's where she got shot in the head and he had to do the fixing. So she just kind of covers up that scar. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you and let us continue. So one of the things I want to share with you is, uh, just really quickly, uh, the size of this settlement is actually very large. See at the front of the train, uh, the engine there? That's the front border of this settlement. And it goes, uh, it goes to right, let's see, wrong gun. I shouldn't have taken off that thing, but it goes to right there. Kind of cuts through, you get that little bit of log sticking over the rock ends up in your build area and it kind of continues down and across across this front area and uh, way over just a, uh, about there y you get this amount of land and then uh, over here you get well you can't see squat you get a lot of the area I think I can build on the freeway I just haven't tried to go up there yet. And um, yeah, so this is a very huge build area. I'm very impressed. Okay, so let's go two minutes, two and a half minutes in. Let's actually do the rest of this tour and try and do it in a real way, not too rushed. I apologize for the chaoticness of the last episode, but as I said, uh, I am where we're staying at, at a Grange. Uh, we're renting a spot and the Grange rents out, um, well, kind of rents out the Grange, which is basically like a giant dance hall out to families that have little parties or quinceañeras and things like that. So sometimes they have to come in here and do their their thing so you guys just got to catch one of their things but here's one of the guard stations and it's got a nice uh, nice line of sight up oh, and over there is one of the shacks and right about there is a random spawn location campsite So, and then there's uh, there's a, the turret that covers this entrance. And yeah, let me showcase this. Junk in a box. Thrift and salvage. We buy, sell, and trade junk. Put your junk in a box and bring it in. So, it's got the sign sitting up there. And uh, it's got a power connector. It connects up with this pole, which goes down and connects to here, so that this windmill provides eight electricity for this place. And then they just kind of built another extension. And this goes all the way over. To this tower, which then goes over and provides electricity for that turret up there. 
as well as uh, electricity for this shower, which drains down right out into here. And they don't use a lot of the water. This is pretty freestanding here, but um, it's, there we go. You can kind of see the water there. And they're also able to do some laundry and drip and air dry. There's a bit of water down there. And they have their towels for their shower. And this shower is powered by this water pump going through a uh, water heating and cooling system. Got some uh, fire extinguishers just in case. But they, uh, they did a makeshift there so that they could actually have a uh, comfortable shower. And they put in a plastic pole so that this uh, could actually, they could attach that there. And there's a water pump and a filter right there. Gives a nice comfortable shower. And uh, again, another view of the water tower. And just kind of a place they put some junk, cleaning the area up, getting it out of the way. And right here is their bathroom, their toilets. Nothing fancy, just, uh, yeah, two holes, and that's it. Just, uh, they, they bring their own toilet paper with them. But, you know, at least it's got a lot of air, cross breeze, to kind of keep the smell down. And it gets, they basically fill up these barrels here. And once these barrels are filled, there are uh, a couple of people come and haul it out. And this is, this is part of the, the back area, but it's not easy to jump up. Barbed wire, sharp things, narrow, oh, it's just a pain in the ass. And uh, then they take these barrels and they empty them out right here into the uh, compost heap. Uh, humanure, I believe is what it's called. And earthworms and food and stuff like that gets put in there so that they have uh, fresh fertilizer to fertilize their crops over there. And here's the inside walls. Again, this is, it looks open, but it's not really, it's difficult. And if you can squeeze without getting injured on the rebar and on the, the eye beams and tripping and making noise and stuff like that, uh, you're still going to get a face full of bullets. So. Yeah. Hello, King. How's King? Oh, you're such a good boy, King. And uh, here's a little, uh, little food and bar. Let's walk up here, and you can order from her. How's it going? <laughs> it's going pretty good. And uh, she's got a nice little supply of stuff. She's got a lot of pre-war food. She's got some post-war food, I guess you could say. You know, their crops are, you know, grilled grilled meat and grilled corn, some nice booze, utensils. I try to smile every day, even when I'm down. It might not brighten my day, but might do some good for others. Well, thank you, Kim. You are a very bright, shining light here in this post-apocalypse. And she's got purified water right here. And uh, this is their garden. You saw that in the last episode when ghouls came and trashed the shit out of it. And this is Kim's home. It's very simple, but, you know, she can draw the curtain when she wants to go to bed at night and keep people from looking in. She can also close this a little bit, but it's still not perfect. But uh, she's got a mirror and another place to uh, wash her face, brush her hair, brush her teeth. And uh, the mirror's not quite as shiny, but it's not bad. She's got a towel there. Yeah, 
she's grilling some fish there. Got some wood there for the barbecue, some oil. And she's got Repcon Radio. She is amazed that they're able to actually uh, broadcast this far. A little candle, got her bed. It's a simple place. You know, she, she recently moved in here, so she doesn't have a lot of belongings, but she does have a nice place that's pretty well defended. And, I mean, we're talking a shipping crate. This thing is steel. It's going to be hard to take out. And this is Walter's home. Walter is the, gar the, the, the farmer gardener. And uh, this van was actually on that overpass. And he and um, uh, Seven over there, she's one of the guards, she helped to repair it and get it running so they have uh, electricity. And the vehicle's fuse box is right down there. So this vehicle has electricity and he's basically placed some of his uh, gardening implements there and you know, he can drive it. But apparently before the war, this thing got banged up and uh, they couldn't find matching doors. So they just got what they could. And uh, there's some more of his gardening stuff. So this apparently was a delivery vehicle or something for the Lobster Grill family restaurants. Banged up door. But here's his place. He's got himself a got himself a bed here. He's got uh let's see, what is that? Ah, true police stories. Alright. He's got some fun reading there. There's a, there's his fuse box and things like that. Oh, yep, and he's got, whoops. He's got uh, some first aid there. And a shelf with some clothes, bathroom stuff, and uh, makeshift shelves, and a makeshift table. And he's even got himself a, uh, a hot plate to do a little bit of cooking, a little pot. Oh, looks like he's got himself a a pie. Waiting to eat on that later. Nice. And his ceiling light works. Turn that off. You can see his ceiling light works. So let's stand up. And this is Bridget's place on the light. It's very open, but you know, she does have a toilet, toilet paper, and she puts it on wrong way around, in my opinion. She's got some first aid, plenty of ammo, and that's gray water, so she, she's got that and that, so she can fill up, uh, pour water into the, the, the toilet so she can flush it. She's not thrilled with this, but at the same time, she's like, eh, fuck it. It's the post-apocalypse. I can do whatever I want to or need. So, as you can see, she's pretty beat up. She doesn't take a lot of shit from anybody. Uh, she's got herself a missile launcher. And there's her bed. And her personal belongings are in there. And nothing fit. Oh, hey. How you doing? Let's trade. Kidnap us a dump as shit asking for ransom. Anyone who gets caught ain't worth a fucking cap. Same goes for me. All right. And this, uh, this here, this fills up from the toilet. They just have it all set up. The uh, pipe goes down, fills up that barrel, and then they take it out. And over here, uh, we've got uh, a bunch of scrap that's being, well, worked on. Part of the uh, steel shipments and things like that. And this truck... Basically, it fell. Somehow, it just got flung and fell and slammed into the ground. And uh, probably, fuck, I don't know which happened first. But anyway, and there's seven. Let's see, let's see if we can talk to her. Hey, seven. Can we trade a few things? I hunted slavers for a while. 
was all part of my three-step 20-kill recovery plan. Now I hunt rat stag, but that's more for fun. She is a treat. Seven is awesome. She is really fun. Got some of the best things to say. And uh, got a little... You, know, you can see that the power is still on. The fusion fusion cells are still working on this, even though it can't fly right now. And junk walls, barbed Please wire. There's a repurposed, uh, reconditioned engine that's used to uh, power up that turret. And we're back here at the ammo. And let's go zipping over here really quickly. I didn't show off this side yet. There's not much to show here apart from this being an area that they're still um, utilizing the products that are in here and or if they're empty, they're stripping them down for uh, shipments. On this way and this is a guard station and there's a turret right there and parenthetically in parentheses uh, ghouls spawn right here as well but a lot of the turrets back there can't get them so you know they'll stand here for a while and I realized I just need to put a turret right there to shoot these guys and fortunately the ghouls can't hit it so that's not going to take any damage okay on parentheses this also shoots any raiders that are coming out over here and this side of the water processing plant purified water ready for drinking and now, there's a little something about Peter here. No, oh, he's gone from, I guess it's after eight. Uh, something, you know what? As a matter of fact, Peter is probably doing, shh, this is a secret. Peter is a friend of the railroad. So he helps escape since. Okay. This is really brightly lit because right back here, well, it's dimly lit back here, but some light might get through. So to kind of keep it on the down low as to any light that bleeds through to the outside, he's got really bright light in here, so it offsets it. And he's got this little room back here for synths. They have something to look forward to in a new new location. They have clean sheets, clean pillow, a bed, and the mantra of the railroad, we can do it. And they have everything they need here. They have food, water, medicine, things to keep themselves uh, clean, tidy, also new clothes so that they can change out of, honestly, they can change out of the, uh, the gunky clothes that they get just here, take these athletic outfits and they can get something really nice to wear and clean themselves up and feel better about themselves before they get shipped out. Uh, but this is still a, uh, a little, oh, you can see the rail sign there. So sometimes there are some additional things inside there. They also have books that they can read, a little light that they can read by, which, you know, gets, uh, this light actually blows out so you can, so to speak, this light so that people don't notice when this light is turned up a bit. And this radio is where Peter gets uh, some of his messages from the railroad stating that somebody's going to be coming by. Uh, but there's a Pip-Boy there with a game 
uh, that they can pop in and they can play the game if they want. Um, there's no volume for the game really, well quiet volume, but it really can't go very high for safety. So usually the volume isn't used, but uh, yeah, and this is really small. You can just squeeze. And it kind of messes me up while I'm moving around. Yeah, loose talk costs lives. Keep it under your hat. And uh, it's just a bit of an illusion there. Because it doesn't take up much space, as you saw. But when you're walking outside, generally when you're walking outside... Oh, oh yes, oh yes, and... You see all this stuff here, right? All this stuff here. Open the door. Oh, it's clipping through. Oh, wow, such bad building. No, it's not. No, it's not. It goes right to the edge, and it goes right underneath the shelves. Doesn't hit anything. It's as close as it could get to look busy, to look like there's no secret door, and yet it fits just underneath this shelf, right here, and it goes right up alongside. So, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that, and it doesn't click. So, oh yes, and he even has a gun here. Oh, seemed to, oh, right. He's got a gun, he's got money, and I kind of had to raise the table a bit, and I forgot to raise the gun. Fuck. Oh, you guys must think poorly of me now. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's got a man-to-man -man magazine, but he does have a lot of supply here. Oh, and food will win the war. He's got... Christmas lights. Plenty of toilet paper. Plenty of supplies. And let's turn on the light. They built this so they use the desk and they grab these uh, anti slip mats for to put onto the metal so that they don't slip off when it rains. And they can repair this turret when they need to, or the generator. And here's the bridge. Oh yes, I can't believe I forgot. And this lantern serves double purpose. One, it shows the entrance, but two, it's a little, little hint to the, uh, Railroad. Let you know, let people know that uh, he is friendly with the railroad. Most people don't know it. Most of the uh, other people here, well, they just like to keep it to themselves. And their, their, their homes are like way over here. His home is right there, right on top of his business. And yeah, you can see the light shining through and such like that. But because of that, you can't tell if it's his light for his shop or if it's the light from the lantern or anything like that. So that's why he did that, overexposing the light. And uh, yeah, he built this up and thought, well, shoot, I might as well use it for some storage as well. Utilize the space. You climb up here, anti-slip floor pads. And oh, there's his puppy. Kind of floating a bit, which is a little weird, but the puppy sleeps there. Puppy sleeps there. And uh, this is Peter's house. And we are going to take a look at it. We are going to tour it. So here's this kitchen. Oh, well, you know what? First of all, this is some protection against, like, you know, well, people, basically. But he has a dog door. <laughs> so to speak. He left it open so that his puppy can come in, uh, come and go from in there if it wants. Oh, and 
This is a uh, scrap plywood door. Uh, I did not realize this was a working door. I think it's from CVC. So this is pretty cool. An actual junk door. I like it. Um, so yeah, puppers, puppers can enter the house there if this door is closed. He's got some reading material here. There's his bar, his wet bar. And there's his food storage. He's got some uh, brain napalm, obviously Deezer's lemonade, some regular booze. He's got himself a small fridge, and he's got some more food storage inside there, and uh, utensils in the drawer. Oh, and Puppy's got some food. That's so awesome. Puppy's got food. And ground mole rat. Here is his cooking station. And he's got himself, can you guys guess what that is? That's right. Those are brass knuckles. Well, in this case, steel knuckles. But do you know what that is? Do you know what that is? Yeah, I thought I had my light on. He is tenderizing his meat. Or to put it in a... Mm, he beats his meat a lot. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I just popped into my head that, hey, you know what? You know, people use the, uh, the combat knife to slice their food. Why not use brass knuckles to tenderize your meat? Maybe he's got some condiments here. And, oh yes, and he is left-handed. That's, that's, uh, that's why those knuckles are there, and that's pointing that way for his right hand to hold it while he beats his meat with his left. There's some more food. I love these ironing boards used as tables. And he's got a spatula here. He's got some uh, bacon and eggs, obviously, in his stove. But not only is this a stove, this is an oven. How, pray tell, is it an oven? Well, he builds a fire in here, closes the door, drawer, closes the drawer all the way up, puts whatever he wants to bake or broil into this drawer, slides it into the top, closes it. And that campfire heats up and cooks the meat inside this middle drawer. So that's how he does that. And this is his bathroom. And, you know, he fills up there and he's able to get a couple of good flushes from that before he has to go down and uh, refill this. He's got his soap there. His, his, keep his teeth and face clean. Oh, and he actually, he uses a washcloth instead of toilet paper. Uh, he just, he gets that wet to sink. And this is filled with uh, filled with gray water. Um, he changes it. Uh, I don't know how often he changes, but he does change it. He's got himself a mirror there and a little towel. And no, he does not use the same washcloth to wash his face. He uses his hands to wash his face. He uses that to wash himself, and then he takes that out every now and then and washes it over at the laundry thing over there and the shower which is actually how a lot of them wash their clothes. So they just, they wear their clothes, grab a bunch of soap, turn on the water and wash the clothes while they're wearing them. He's got some ammo here for the turret, right there. He's got himself a window, it keeps out most of the bugs. He's got himself a light and he's got some reading material here. La Fantoma. And I thought you guys might like this. This protects him from most of the bugs. But when he wants fresh air, he can open his window. And he can open his window. Or if he wants fresh air, but it's he sees some fuck, I don't know, flying bugs. And close that and still keep this open. And shoot at raiders. We go over here, and he's got a map on the on the wall. Not sure why he's got a map. Oh! I don't know why he has a map. He's got a map because he's part of the railroad, so he needs to know things and locations. Okay, hopefully you guys heard that. So here, uh, he has this. 
so he can open it. And he's got some tools here so he can maintain this or repair it if he needs to or when he needs to uh, load the machine gun again. Uh, he can. And he can close this. And again, he can take this and it's attached to the wood, but he can... 30 minutes, good. He can roll this down and attach it to nails down here that are just a little too small to see. And then the bugs can't come in through this opening as, as well. So this basically rolls up and rolls down. And then he can open this and crawl under or whatever. So then over here, it's not much, but you know, it's a foyer basically. Opens up out here and he can do some work or reload this turret, which has a heck of a, of a line of sight, of a sign of light. <laughs> but yeah, you can build beyond this freeway overpass. I don't know how high you can build. I don't know if you can actually build up on that overpass. I haven't tried it yet. But honestly, I was trying to do this build as best I could without scrapping these things because honestly if even if you just move these rail cars everything glitches out and goes invisible it's really weird so anyway oh yes oh yes and he's got himself a thatched roof but he's also got chain link in the roof again to keep out any flying bugs that might be able to get in through the opening up there this can probably let, you know, rad roaches crawl in, but rad roaches usually don't fly very high in this game. Uh, but this will basically keep out uh, blood bugs and stingwings. And most bloat flies. Even a bloat fly it would have a hard time squeezing through that without damaging its wings, in which case, well, then it can't fly and shoot its own larva at you. And over here so that they can't fly in here and then crawl up and over it's got the chain link so they can't get in and then right here scooter here is able to uh, you know do some fighting as well and uh, oh look at scooter play oh, look at scooter play oh good scooter so yes have that turn off the light and let's see oh yes and just in case uh one of the reasons why peter was not showing up in here for the longest fucking time uh i uso gives you some mats quote unquote rugs that fix pathing so basically i put a pathing mat on this door angled it and everything so it, it goes at the right angle so they can walk down this and i put a pathing mat here on the floor that goes you know fills in this whole opening here put another pathing mat back here and then put the um basically the bartender mat here so he you know leans on the bar and looks like he's a shopkeeper and I placed a uh, pathing mat here just for safety, you know, so that he kind of goes, oh, I can, and it overlaps. Because they can probably path on this just because this is, uh, I don't know, this might be USO or CVC or whatever. It's a regular one that any of the settlers can normally walk on same thing with this ladder they can path these no problem but he might be getting might have been getting stuck going over this so i put a pathing mat to overlap so that they will walk and come in here uh, i don't know if that's required but it took so long to get peter to just freaking stand at his table there it was so frustrating and I don't know why these, oh, sorry, they're probably having a tryst and, and they want a little privacy because, I don't know, maybe they like motorcycles. I don't know. So, yeah, 
35 minutes. Okay. So I'm very, I'm very happy with this settlement. Um, it is really huge. Let's see. You know what? I got a few minutes. Let me turn on the info stuff. And let me just put this so that it doesn't keep trying to click on everything. Okay. Damn it. It's not what I meant to do. Okay. Damn it. Did it again. <laughs> I meant to do this so that it doesn't start, you know, oh, well, let's go and start stuttering. But let's just see. I think you should see in the upper corner where it says, ooh, boundary, Oop, outside the buildable area. Okay, we're back inside the build area. This is how far in front of that train we can go. And then, well, I'm a little nervous because sometimes it doesn't come up. There we go, outside buildable area. So then we go this ah, jump. Let's see. I, I know because I do see it sometimes. I'm pretty sure I see it sometimes. Oh, there we go. Here's the buildable area. Back in. So I guess you do get the whole tree there. Oh, start going over here. Outside the buildable. Back inside. So we're pretty close to that. And, uh, you know, there's, there's the, uh, vanilla workshop. Oh my gosh, I wanted to show you something else. It'll probably be a, I don't know, Journal of the Weird. Let's see. How far up this road can we go? Okay. We can go to here on the road. And... Okay, outside the buildable area. Ugh, damn it. Okay, back in. And let's, okay, back in. So, there's the, there's all that. Here's the train with the knocked over stuff. Okay, buildable area. And then... We're at... Son of a bitch, we're at 38 minutes already. Okay, anyway, this, as you can see, this place is freaking huge. So... Let me just run over here really quickly. Hello, Morty, cute little puppy. And screw it. Thank you all for joining me. Remember, be excellent to each other and yourselves. Party on.